Good morning, everyone. Welcome to theCUBE's day two coverage of VMware Explorer 2022, live from San Francisco. Lisa Martin here with Dave Nicholson. We're excited to kick off day two of great conversations with VMware partners, customers, its ecosystem. We've got a v an alumni back with us, Kumaran Siva, Corporate VP of Business Development from AMD joins us. Great Hello. to have you on the program in person. Great to be here, yes, in person indeed. Welcome. So the great thing yesterday, a lot of announcements. Mm -hmm. AMD had an announcement with VMware, which we'll, we'll unpack that. But there's about 7,000 to 10,000 people here. People are excited, ready to be back, ready to be hearing from this community, which is so nice. Yesterday, AMD announced it is optimizing AMD Pensando distributed services card to run on VMware vSphere 8. vSphere 8 was announced yesterday. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, the Pensando uh, SmartNIC DPU, what it allows you to do is it, it provides a whole bunch of capabilities including offloads, including um, uh, encryption, decryption. Um, it can even do functions like compression, but with, uh, with the combination of uh, VMware Project Monterey and, um, and Pensando, what we're able to do is even do some of the uh, vSphere uh, uh, actual offloads integration of the hypervisor into the DPU card. It's, it's pretty interesting and pretty powerful technology. We're, we're pretty excited about it. I think this, this could you know, potentially you know, bring some of the cloud value into, in terms of manageability, um, in terms of being able to take care of bare metal servers, uh, and also you know, better secure um, uh, infrastructure. You know, cloud-like techniques into the, uh, into the mainstream on-premises enterprise. Okay, talk a little bit about the DPU data processing unit. They talked about it on stage yesterday, but help me understand that versus the CPU, a GPU. Yeah, so it's, 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 a different, it's a different point, right? So normally you'd, you'd have the CPU, you'd have um, I think we call it dumb networking card, right? And I say dumb, but it's, it's, you know, it's, just, it's just designed to go uh, process packets you know, put, and uh, put them onto PCI and have the, the CPU do all of the kind of the, the packet processing, the, uh, the uh, uh, virtual switching, um, all of those functions inside the CPU. What the DPU allows you to do is, is uh, actually offload a bunch of those functions directly onto the, um, onto the DPU card. So it has a combination of these special purpose processors that are uh, programmable with a language called P4, uh, which is what, one of the key things that Pensando brings. Here's a, it's, a, it's a real um, uh, easy to program, easy to use, uh, you know, kind of uh, set so that not some, of, some of our larger enterprise customers can actually go in and you know, do some custom uh, coding depending on what their um, network infrastructure looks like. But you can do things like the vSwitch in, in, uh, in the DPU not having to all have that um, done on the CPU. So you freeze up some of the CPU cores, make sure, uh, make sure um, infrastructure run more efficiently, but probably even more importantly, it provides you with, more, with greater security, greater separation uh, between the um, uh, between the networking side and the, and the CPU side. So, so that's, that, that's a key point, because a lot of us um, remember the era of the TOW NIC, mm -hmm. TCP IP offload engine NIC. This isn't simply offloading CPU cycles. This is actually providing a sort of isolation so that the network, right. is, the network has intelligence that is separate from the server. Is that, that's is that absolutely a fair, is, key. Is that's that a fair way key. to? Yeah, okay. yeah that's, that's a good way of looking at it. Uh, yeah, and that's, that's uh, um, I mean, if you look at some of the, uh, the, the techniques used in the cloud, the, uh, you know, this, this, this in fact brings some of those technologies into, into the enterprise, right? So where you are wanting to have that level of separation and management, you're able to now utilize the DPU card. So that's, that's a really big, uh, big, big part of the value proposition, the manageability, not just offload, but you know, kind of a better network for enterprise. Right, right. Can you expand on that value proposition? If I'm a customer, what's in this for me? How does this help power my multi-cloud organization? Yeah, so I think we have some, uh, we actually have a, a number of these in real customer use cases today. And so, you know, uh, folks will use, uh, for example, the uh, compression uh, um, and the, uh, sorry, the uh, compression and decompression. That's, that's definitely an application in the storage side. But also on the, just on the, just, just as, a, as a DPU card in the mainstream general purpose um, general purpose server, server infrastructure fleet, they're able to use the um, encryption and decryption to make sure that their, their, uh, their infrastructure is, is kind of safe you know, from point to point within the network. So every, every, connected, uh, uh, every connection there is actually encrypted. Um, and that, that you know, managing those policies and orchestrating all of that, that's done through the DPU card. So, so what you're saying is if you have DPUs involved, then the server itself and the CPUs become completely irrelevant, and basically it's just a box of sheet metal at that point. <laughs> 
That's, no, my, that's a good way of looking that's at that. Uh, that's, that's my that's segue a, no, into no. talking about the value proposition yeah. of the actual AMD. No, absolutely. <laughs> no, no. I think I think I think the the, the, the CPUs are always going to be central in this. Um, and uh, look, so so I think I think having having the the DPU is extremely powerful, and and it does allow you to have better infrastructure. But the key to having better infrastructure is to have the best CPU. Well, tell, and, us, and that's, tell us. That's about what. That. Tell um, us about that. So so I you know this is this is where um, a lot of the the great value value proposition between VMware and AMD come together. So VMware really allows enterprises to take advantage of these high core count, really modern um, you know, CPU, our, 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 our uh, Epic, um, especially our Milan, our 7003 product line. So to be able to take advantage of 64 cores, you know, VMware is critical for that. And, and so what, they, what they've been able to do is, um, you know, for example, if you have workloads running on legacy, uh, you know, like five-year-old servers, you're able to take a whole bunch of those servers and consolidate them down into a single node, right? And the power that VMware gives you is the manageability, the reliability, brings all of that factors and allows you to, to take advantage of, uh, of the, the, uh, uh, the latest, latest generation CPUs. You know, we've actually done some TCO modeling where we can show, even if you have fully depreciated hardware, like so it's like five years old plus, right? And so, you know, the actual cost, you know, it's, it's already been written off, but the right. cost, just the cost of running it in terms of the power and the administration, um, you know, the OPEX costs that, that are associated with it are greater than the uh, cost of acquiring a new set of, you know, a smaller set of AMD servers. Yeah. And, and being able to consolidate those workloads, run VM, VMware, to provide you with that great, great user experience, especially with vSphere 8.0 and the, and the uh, hooks that uh, VMware have built in for AMD, AMD processors, you, you actually see really, really good, um, it's just a great user experience. Um, it's also a more efficient, you know, just better for the planet. Um, and it's also better on the pocketbook, which is, which is, which is a really cool thing these days, because our value in TCO translates directly into a value in terms of sustainability. Right, and so you know, from from energy consumption, from you know, just just the cost of having that there, it's just a whole lot better. Talk about on the sustainability front, how AMD is helping its customers achieve their sustainability goals, and are you seeing more and more customers coming to you saying, "We want to understand what AMD is doing for sustainability because it's important for us to work with vendors who have a core focus on it." Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I think look, I'll, I'll be perfectly honest. When we first designed our CPU, we we're just trying to build the biggest, baddest thing that you know that that comes out in terms of having the the, the best. Uh, the, the, number, the, the, the largest number of cores and the best TCO for our customers. But what it's actually turned out, that TCO involves energy consumption. Right. And, and it involves you know, the, the whole process of bringing down a whole bunch of uh, uh, nodes, a whole bunch of uh, servers. For example, we have one calculation where we showed 27, you know, like, I think like five-year-old servers, can be consolidated down into five AMD servers. That, that ratio, you can see already you know, huge gains in terms of sustainability. Now, you asked about the sustainability conversation. There's, I'd say not a week goes by where I'm not having a conversation with, with a, a, a CTO or a CIO who is, you know, who's got that as part of their corporate, you know, as part of their corporate brand and they want to find out how to make their, their um, uh, infrastructure, their data center uh, more green, right? And so that's, that's where we come in. Yeah, and it's interesting because at least in the US, money is also green. <laughs> so when you talk about the cost of power, especially in places yeah. like California, that's right. uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a natural incentive to drive in that direction. Let's talk about security. You know, the, the, the threat landscape has changed so yeah. dramatically in the last couple of years. Ransomware is a household word. Yes. Ransomware attacks happen like one every 11 seconds. Older technology, a little bit more vulnerable to internal threats, external threats. How is AMD helping customers address yeah. the security front, which is a board so, level conversation? That, that, that's, 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 a, that's a great, uh, great question. Uh, like, look, I look at security as being, you know, it's a layered thing, right? I mean, if you talk to any security experts, security doesn't, you know, there's not one component, and we are an ingredient within the, the greater, you know, the greater scheme of things. A few things, one is we have partnered very closely with VMware. They have enabled our SEV technology, secure uh, encrypted virtualization technology into, uh, into uh, um, uh, vSphere, so such that uh, all of the memory transactions. So you have you have uh, security, you know, at, you know, security when you store store in, on disks. You have security over the network, and you also have security in the compute. And when you go out to memory, that's what this SEV technology gives you. It gives you that that security um, 
go, go, in, your, in your actual virtual machine as it's running. Uh, and so the, the, we take security extremely seriously. I mean, one of the things, every generation that you see from, from AMD, and, and, and you, know, you have seen us hit our cadence, we do upgrade all of the security features um, and we address all of the sort of known threats that are out there. And obviously this threat's you know, you know, kind of coming at us all the time, but our CPUs just get better and better from, from, from a, a security uh, stance. So sh shifting gears for a minute, um, obviously we know the pending possible acquisition, the announced acquisition of VMware by Broadcom. Uh, AMD's got a relationship with Broadcom independently, right? No, of course. Ha, ha, what, yes, what is yes. that, how, how's that relationship? Oh, it's a great relationship. I mean, we, we you know, they, uh, they have certified their their uh, uh, their NIC products, their HPA products, which are utilized in um, you know for for uh, storage systems, uh, SAN systems, those those type of mm -hmm. architectures, the uh, hardcore storage architectures. We we work with them very closely, so they they've, they've been a great partner with us for years. Um, and you've got, um, I know, you know, we're we're talking about current generation available on the shelf Milan-based architecture, is mm -hmm. that right? That's right, yeah. Um, but if I understand correctly, maybe sometime this year you're, uh, yes, you're going to be ro right. rolling, out the, rolling out the new stuff? Yeah, absolutely. So later this year, we've already, you know, we already talked about this publicly, we have a, a 96 core uh, Genoa um, platform, up to 96 cores mm -hmm. Genoa platform. So we're just, we're just taking that TCO value just to the next level, increasing performance, DDR5, um, CXL, uh, with, uh, with the memory expansion capability, very, very neat leading edge technology. Uh, so that's that's going to be available. Is that next gen PCIe or has that shift already been made? It's been it's uh, next next gen PCIe PCIe okay. Gen five. Okay. So we'll have we'll have that capability. Um, that, that'll be that'll be out by the end of this year. Okay. Uh, so, so those components our, you talk about. Yeah. You know you talk about the the Broadcom VMware universe. Those that's components great. that are going into those new slots are also factors in performance and. Yeah, absolutely. You need the balance, right? You need to have uh, networking, storage, and the CPU. We're very cognizant of how to make sure that these cores are fed appropriately, okay? Because if you just put out a lot of cores, you don't have enough memory, you don't have enough IOs. That's, that's the key to, to, to um, you know, our approach to, to enabling performance in the enterprise. Make sure that the systems are balanced. So you know, the experience that you've had with, let's say, your, you know, your 12 core, your 16 core, you can have that same experience in the 96 core, uh, in, in a uh, uh, node or 96 core socket, so maybe 100, you know, 192 cores total, mm -hmm. right? So you can have that same experience in, in a two node uh, in a much denser uh, you know, in, uh, package uh, uh, server today. Or, or if using Milan technology, you know, 128 cores, super, super good it's performance, you know, yeah. su it's super good experience. It's, it's designed to scale, right? And especially with VMware as, as our infrastructure, it works great. I mean, Lisa, Lisa's Got a question to ask, I know, but bear with me one, bear with me. Yes, sir. We've actually initiated coverage of this question of, you know, does hardware matter right. anymore? Does it matter anymore? Yeah. So I put to you the question, do you think hardware still matters? Oh, I think, I think it's going to matter even more and more going forward. I mean, you just- But it's just all on, cloud, who just, cares? Just, just in this conversation today, right? <laughs> well, who cares, it's all cloud. Yeah, so, so, so definitely their workloads moving to the cloud and we love our cloud partners, <laughs> don't get me wrong, right? But there are, you know, it's just, I've had so many conversations at this show this week about customers who cannot move to the cloud because of regulatory reasons. Yeah. You know, the other thing that you don't realize too, I, I, that's new to me, is that people have depreciated their data centers. So the cost for them to just go put in new AMD servers is actually very low compared to the cost of having to go buy, buy a public cloud service. They still want to go buy public cloud services, and that, by the way, we have great, great, great AMD instances on, on AWS, on Google, on Azure, uh, Oracle, like all of our major, all of the major um, uh, cloud providers uh, support AMD and have, have great um, you know, TCO uh, instances that they've, they've put out there with good performance. Yeah. What are some of the key use cases that customers are coming to AMD for, and, and what have you seen change in the last couple of years with respect to every customer needing to become a data company, needing to really yeah. be data driven? No, that's, that, that's also a great question. So, you know, I used to get this question a lot. She only asks yeah. great questions. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I ask this, I, just, I, I, just, I, I go like, down and I like, crawl like around in the weeds and get excited about the bits and the bytes, <laughs> she asks <that. laughs> But no, I, I think, look, I think the, uh, uh, you know, a few years ago, and I, I think, uh, you know, I used to get this question all the time, what workloads run best on AMD? My answer today is unequivocally all the workloads, okay? Because we have processors that run, you know, run at the highest performance per thread, per, per core, 
that you can get, and then we have processors that have the highest throughput. Um, and, and sometimes they're one and the same, right? And you know, with Milan 64, with, configured the right way using, using VMware vSphere, you can actually get extremely good per core performance and extremely good throughput performance. It works well across, just as you said, like the database, the data management, all of those kinds of uh, capabilities, DevOps, um, you know, uh, uh, ERP, like there's just been a whole slew, slew of uh, applications, use cases. We have design wins in, in major customers in every single industry, um, in every, and these are big, you know, the big guys, right? And they're, they're, they're using AMD, they're successfully moving over uh, their workloads without, without issue for the most part. In some cases, customers tell us they just, they just uh, um, move the workload on, turn it on, it runs great. Right, and, and they're, they're f f fully happy with it. You know, there are other cases where, where we've actually gotten involved and we figured out you know, th there's this configuration and that configuration, but it's typically not a, not a huge lift to move to AMD, and that's, that I think is a, is a, key, uh, it's a key point. And we're working together with um, uh, almost all of the major ISV partners, right? and so just to make sure that, that, uh, that they have run, tested, certified, um, I think we have over 250 world record benchmarks you know, r running in all sorts of uh, you know, like Oracle Database, uh, uh, SAP, um, uh, Business Suite, and all of those, th those types of uh, applications run, run extremely well on AMD. Is there a particular customer story that you think really articulates the value of running on AMD in terms of enabling biz big business outcomes, say for a financial services organization or a healthcare organization? Yeah, I mean, we, yeah, there's certainly been, I mean, across the board. So in, in healthcare, we've seen customers um, actually do the, uh, the server consolidation very effectively. Uh, and then you know take advantage of the uh, the lower um, cost of operation because in some cases they're they're trying to run servers on each floor of a hospital for example we've had use cases where customers have been able to do that because of the density that we provide and to be able to to actually you know take take their compute more even to the edge than, than actually have it in the uh, in, in those use cases uh, in um, in a, uh, a centralized uh, manner. The uh, another another interesting case is uh, FSI in financial services. We have customers that use us for general purpose IT. We have customers that use us for kind of the the high performance uh, we call it grid computing. So you know you have uh, guys that you know do all this trading during the day. They collect tons and tons of data, and then they use our computers to or our CPUs to just crunch through that data overnight. And it's just like this big supercomputer that just crunches. Um, it, it's, it's pretty incredible. And there, the, the, the density of the CPUs, the value that we bring, um, really shines. But in, in their general purpose fleet as well, right? So they're able to use VMware, a lot of VMware customers in that space. We love our, we love our VMware customers. And they're able to, to, uh, to utilize this. They use, use us with HCI, um, so hyperconverged infrastructure with vSAN. V, 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 v uh, and that's, uh, that, that's, that's work, uh, works extremely well and, and, and our, our enterprise customers are extremely happy with that. Talk about, as we wrap things up here, what's next for AMD, especially AMD with VMware as VMware undergoes its potential change? Yeah, so there, there's a lot that we have going on. I mean, I got to say, VMware is one of the, um, you know, let's say premier co companies in terms of you know, being innovative and being, being able to drive uh, new, new interesting pieces of technology and, and they're very experimentative. Right, so they, we have we have a, a ton of things going with them, but certainly, you know, driving Pensando is, is very it's very very uh, uh, important to us. Uh, yeah, I think that the whole we're just in the, the cusp, I believe, of uh, you know server consolidation becoming a big thing for us. So driving that together with VMware and you know into some of these enterprises where we can show uh, you know save the earth while we you know in terms of reducing power, reducing and, and saving money in terms of TCO, but also being able to enable new capabilities. You know, the other part of it too is this new infrastructure enables new workloads. So things like uh, machine learning, um, you know, more data analytics, more sophisticated processing, uh, you know, that, that is all enabled by this new infrastructure. So we, we were excited. We think that we're on the precipice of, you know, going, you know, with a lot of industries moving forward to, to having, you know, the next level of IT. It's no longer about just payroll or, or, or uh, enterprise business management. It's about, you know, how do you make your, you know, your, your knowledge workers more productive, right? And how do you give them more capabilities? And that, that is really what's exciting for us. Awesome, Kumaran, thank you so much for joining Dave and me on the program today talking about what AMD, what you're doing to supercharge customers, your partnership with VMware, and what is exciting, what's on the, the forefront, the frontier. We appreciate your time and your insights. Great, thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. For our guest and Dave Nicholson, 
I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from VMware Explorer 22 from San Francisco. But don't go anywhere, Dave and I will be right back with our next guest.